Well, hello everyone. Welcome to my channel. My name is Owen. So today we're going to have fun, get loose. We're starting off a new year. Let's just have some fun today. Let's paint some quick and easy birthday cards using a glazing technique. As you can see, when the colors bleed into each other, they change color tones. And I go over this step by step, super easy. If you're a beginner, you just got some watercolors and you just want to play and experiment, this is the tutorial for you. And if you're a Patreon member, you get the bonus cake. So um, if you want to be a Patreon, click the link below in the description box to join my Patreon. You have extra add-on videos, exclusive tutorials on Thursdays. We have a Facebook group where we do monthly giveaways and weekly challenges. And we have Patreons get first dibs and watercolor workshops and retreats. It's just a place people go and support my channel, which I super, super appreciate. So for this tutorial today, it's just simple colors, simple shapes color upon color creates this glazing technique where the color changes and it's kind of fun and if you want to just do some simple really quick birthday cards this is for you so without further ado let's get started all right to get started we'll go over a few things um i just taped down some arch paper like if you have scrap this is like a perfect exercise to use your scrap paper for um i'm using like a four by six i think this is maybe a little bit small i don't know um, grab all your paints that you have. We're going to be playing with color, layering, you know, wet on wet kind of situation. And um, think about when you're doing this kind of card situation that I'm doing the layering color. What colors work well layering, right? So I'm going to talk about cool tones and hot tones. Cool tones will be blues and purples and greens and hot tones will be yellows, reds, oranges, pinks, that kind of stuff. So for the first one, um, I thought we'd just put down a simple wash of yellow. And why is that? Because we're gonna play play with the layering on top of it. So I'm gonna just grab whatever brush you have, whatever's convenient. I'll just grab a 12 Princeton Neptune series. And I'll take my yellow, Cabin Yellow Deep, and I'll just loosen this up really loose. And I'm just gonna put a nice wash of yellow over the whole thing. And I taped this down, by the way, with Scotch Magic Tape. Uh, it works well for me. Use whatever tape works well for you. So here's part of the hot tones, yellow. And we're gonna wait till this whole thing completely dries. It's just a nice wash. Now, depending on how much thick, you know, like amount of color you put on here. So mine's pretty loose. Like the consistency is basically tea. It will dry lighter than this but you just put the first wash down of this lovely color and we're gonna let this dry. So it's completely dry. Now grab some brushes that would make sense and easy to use. If we're gonna do like something like candles, maybe take a flat wash brush that's small. This is, I don't even know, like a <laughs> half inch or smaller than that. I don't, these are just crappy little brushes that I have. This is three eighths inch brush. And take some colors that are hot tones again. I loosen up some pinks. I've got this bright rose here. Loosen up some reds. I have cabin red light here. You know, and then of course we can use the yellow again. We can mix the red and yellow to make orange. But actually, when you mix the red red on here, it's going to make orange, right? And even mixing like the blue on here, it's going to change it to green. This is the fun part. <laughs> So you just take this. This is how if you're brand new to watercolor, you're playing with what it can do when you're mixing colors, when you're layering. This is a layering technique, a glazing technique. So I'm just gonna take this, put it in my brush. The consistency is pretty much like the, like tea. You know, think of the tea that you drink. And you're adding the water to this tube paint here. This is a bright rose from Holbein. And I have always have my supplies that I use in my description box, just click and it used to be click the word show more, but just like it has like more and you click that. So just take the flat wash brush and just go down straight down for the candle. It's already changed the color a little bit, right? Um, you can take the red. Let me space it out a little bit more. And make them different lengths. See, they changed a little bit. Not too much, though, because they're, they're also very hot tones, like I said. Uh, what do I have over here? I have pyro red, but that's an intense color. Um, let me play around with some. Now, the blues you don't want to play around with with the yellow is ultramarine blue. It's going to make a muddy, ugly yellow. You want a bright blue. 
the Prussian blue or a peacock blue. So if I take the Prussian blue and loosen this up a little bit, put some more water, get a very consistency, light tea here. Tap it on my paper towel a little bit. Just put this up here so you can see. I'm going to tap it. Look what will happen. Uh, so it's turning to a little green color. Look at that. Really cute, right? Peacock blue is more of a turquoise. So I'll loosen that up. I'll get a much more brighter, intense green. See that? Much more turquoise type green. Again, you don't want to put a purple color over the yellow because that is going to be brown and mud because yellow and purple are complementary colors. They're opposites, so it won't look pretty. So you have to think of all these colors. You can put yellow back over it again, like thick right down the tube. Let's see what we got. It has a little green tinge to mine. <laughs> I had some blue on there, but that's okay. So it's a little yellow green. So here we're just playing with the glazing. And then you can glaze over those two, or all the, uh, the colors themselves again. So I'm going to take some more beautiful, this bright rose. Go right in there. See? And I put another one over here. So you already have a background color. Really simple. And then you're going back in and you're adding in the other colors. So it's just really, really simple to do, right? Um, is that red? Maybe get a little thicker. So it's a much more brighter red. Voila. Right there, you have your simple candles, right? Um, we can take it a step further by going on top of them, a glazing again on top of these things, but we have to actually make sure that they are dry. So I would wait a bit, let them dry, and we'll come back. So we'll take the same colors again, right? Play around with it. I use the thicker brush here. So you could go in between these with another candle with the same color. So here's that bright rose. Gonna mix this up a little bit. Now let's go between these two. <laughs> really cool, isn't it? Can you see how it overlaps and you've got that nice little glaze? And you could do another one. Now, when you go over this turquoise, it might turn purple and might turn brown. Let's just take our chances and play with it. <gasps> it turned purple. See how cool that is? Now we have like another stripe in there. So therefore, we can play with that blue even more, right? We can grab the peacock blue. That was the peacock blue that you painted over. And let's go over this candle. Just really cool. Just a fun, simple card to do. And then you're getting the gist of what, what happens with watercolor because it's transparent and you're going top of a color, color on top of another color can change the color. You know, therefore, have fun with that. Let's take this yellow. Let's see what we could do between these two. Now it's a little thick. Let me loosen this up. So it's not really getting much of a, <laughs> not much of a glazing scenario there. We could do it again over in here and we'd probably get the green on the blue. Yes, very funky, right? And then I wouldn't do any more than that. I mean, you could do another layer if you wanted to. It might make people confusing. <laughs> really, really simple. And then um, you would take, you know, uh, another brush, like a simple small brush, maybe number eight uh, long round or a 10 round or something. And you can just make the flames. So you could just take the bright yellow here, mix it with some red, make an orange, and then just make a simple teardrop for the flame just like this now if you want the flame here you can go on top of the colors like I talked about and you have that glazing technique 
really, really simple, fun, pretty card. Really doesn't require lots of skill, but you can play for days with the colors. Any background, you can start doing a blue background, etc. You know, you get the gist of this now. I'm making this a little bit darker by adding more red. So my little candle flame here. And we'll just use a, uh, a very thin Sharpie pen to connect the two, or you can use paint. So you look like the candle connects with the wick, right? And then on top, you can write words with this pen. Um, I'm gonna wait till this dries, and we're gonna go in and just do the wick and with the words. So it's dry, we just take our pen, just connect the two, just a little simple line. And you already have a really cute birthday card for somebody that took you like less than five minutes. Um, you can just write happy birthday, really small. I like to write little letters. Happy birthday. Really kind of cute and small. Voila. Now, if we want to take it another step further, I know that's the simple part. We can get a little more creative by adding patterns with our glazing too. So just take the little lines going across. I have a wonderful candle tutorial that you've probably seen with just patterns and candles and you basically put a tape through it and you write the happy birthday through it. You can see it. But here, we can get a little step further. You can get a little more a little more creative, right? You can add stripes going across vertical too. This is where you take it up a notch. With the same, I use bright rose by the way. See, I'm getting more creative. Same thing with the blues. I'll take the peacock blue. Oh, maybe I would go, you could do some circles. So the glaze, that's a little thick, but thinner. Just on the candle that's glazed over. Made this one a little bit too thick. But look how beautiful, look kind of delicate that looks. Really fun, really simple. Now I feel like I gotta balance the dots on the other side somehow. So I'll take my red and I'll put some dots over here. But really minimal effort to create such a sweet little card. Someone really appreciate that you took the effort to paint something for them. All right, we'll remove the tape. Let's see what we did. Hold on, I'm gonna just take my tape out this way. I always remove it away from the paper so it doesn't rip the paper. And we have a lovely card, really bright all around because you have the background ready to go. Ta-da! <laughs> Moving on. All right, and by the way, here's the card I was talking about. Um, it's part of this collection with these. You can see the, the video. I'll put a link in the box below um, of the video that I did a couple of years ago. Um, two or three years ago, I don't know, I can't remember, it's been a while, um, of more candles that are really simple and easy to do. So, and I thought it'd be kind of fun to combine something like this with presents. So this is how my mind works. <laughs> and pretty much a balloon, you can draw a balloon, and we're gonna have the balloons basically carrying the presents and we can kind of overlap them, the same premise that we had with the candles, right? See how these overlap? Here, and you have the same thing with the glazing technique. So you don't really need to draw out the balloons, but if you want to do that, draw them out. But I'm just gonna paint them. I'm gonna grab my number 12 brush and I'll paint up just like maybe two, I think I wanna do three and overlapped, I don't know. But we're gonna try them in the cool colors. So I'm gonna grab my peacock blue. and just put this bright color. So you start like an oval for the balloon. And its consistency is basically T again. Now it might work better if you do somewhat smaller brush because we have to do that little triangle kind of on the bottom of the oval. 
of the balloon. So I'll grab my Princeton 8 long round and just do the little upside down triangle on the bottom. Zoom in so you can see this. Upside down triangle. Boom. Now I'll put another color over here and then we can do the, the colors like in between and they can make presents dropping from them. So I have a lot of peacock blue over here. Uh, so we could make a purple color if we want. Um, I would use, for that, I would use the bright rose and ultramarine blue. Make a beautiful purple. Ultramarine blue and basically a nice pink, like any kind of beautiful, beautiful purple color. And the more pink you add, the more pinky purple, and the more blue, the more blue purple. So let's add a little purple balloon. We haven't had any purples yet. Same thing with the oval. Mm, I think it's better when I paint it with the this, the oval with a bigger brush and then go back in with this tiny brush for the triangle, personally. And I'll do a green one on the side over here. So I'll use my Kevin Yellow Deep and Prussian Blue and more yellow, get like a nice bright green. All right, that's a little thick, so I need, really need to water it down so we have that whole effect. Get it into the tea consistency. And more yellow. And I might have it come, like, composition wise, let's make it interesting. Let's have it come off the paper. And it's a little bit bigger than the other ones, but. And you can make yours bigger. So it's kind of bleeding off the page. Okay. Now just imagine if you want to take a pencil that there's a present coming down from here. So you can kind of just like draw a little line coming down, coming down, and here, and then you just do a square here. So you could use your flat wash brush or whatever brush you want to use. Of course now I'm looking for my flat wash brush. This is how my life works. I just used this. Here we go. Um, and then the present below can be a totally different color. Could be all blues again. You can add some reds, whatever. I'll go and grab the peacock blue here. I'll make a simple square or rectangular shape for the present. If you want a colorful, you can add some pinks and reds. So I'll do another one that's bright rose for this present. And where it's gonna be like longer or shorter, have it floating again. Maybe rectangle, more of a rectangle on this one for this present. Just imagine the line coming there. And I think for the last one, I'll do like a yellow. I have made my yellow kind of dirty, but I'll just clean that up. And I'll grab some yellow. Because you want this bright, fun birthday colors. Okay. So now we have to wait for everything to dry and we'll come back and I'll do our glazing. So just like the first one, we have to think about what we want color on top of each other. The purple would be nice on top of this. A yellow would be nice on top of this for a present. I mean, for a balloon, um, you know, for the glazing, or we can do, I, I wouldn't, you could do the pink on this one because it is peacock blue. It's up to you. This kind of green came out kind of muddy, but it happens. <laughs> um, I think I'll just do like a yellow. So I'm going to grab my yellow, cabin yellow deep, and make a balloon. It goes over that balloon like it's in front of it, or it could actually be behind it. And see, so you're crossing over on top of the, again, the, the consistency of the paint needs to be T so that the overlap you can see where they two meet it turns to green. All right, we'll do the triangle in a bit on the bottom. Um, same thing with this one. I'm gonna just use the bright rose because I, I believe it won't be pretty with <laughs> a yellow. Obviously, I'll make brown. My bright rose is getting a little messed up here. Okay, again. Let's come and have it coming off the page and where it meets, be like a little darker purple. 
do my little oval. Kind of cute, right? And then I'll do another one over here. Um, I could do the same peacock blue, or I can just do. If I did ultramarine, the that green's going to kind of get really muddy. So I'm thinking I'm going to go back and just use peacock blue again. And I can just go over the two balloons, so the peacock will get darker, and it'll be like dark green here. Now you don't have to don't connect them all like right there together and next to each other. I might have another one floating down here just to make the composition look like it makes sense. And of course we have to add those little triangles on the bottom of everything. Uh, rose and the yellow. And then we kind of have to add a present, don't we? So have the line, imaginary line coming down, and the colors of the present can be totally different. Since I have pink hair, I might as well add the red. I can play around with adding some cadmium red light. Get the red color in there somewhere. So the present's going to be here. I just go over this overlapping. Right? Think about what you want over here. Um, I can put a green over here, a nice bright green. I'm going to put more yellow in my green over here. Wasn't It's kind of muddy. So I'm going to brighten that up and loosen the color. And the present will go over here in the blue and the crisscross on the peacock blue. And you have that like funky square. Already looks cool, right? <laughs> it's a cut. It reminds you of the tissue paper when it goes on top of each other. That's kind of what it is. And then here, you have to figure out, you know, if this is dry and this is dry, you can do red again. I wouldn't do purple because um, it would be like mud, but you could do the peacock blue because it will turn purple here and it will turn green here. See? Playing with the colors here. So loosen up the peacock blue and you got a purple on that side and you got a green on this side. And that's how the glazing works. Really kind of fun. Now I just realized I didn't have <laughs> this one would connect to this kind of wiggly, but that's okay. And now that they're all like done, those glazing, you can wait till they dry and you can add some patterns to it again. So you can leave it like this, or you can go back in with the peacock blue and add some stripes. Same thing with the balloons too, you know. Um, some stripes here. Again, thin paint, like translucent, so it has that effect. The red, oh, my, my brush was a little muddy, so I'll have to clean it. Sometimes it happens. Okay, and I can do some polka dots with this one. Get creative with your little patterns. I'm just doing simple stripes and dots and polka dots. All right, and then there's the bright rose. Stripe. And then you can do the same thing. Like, I don't know if I would necessarily do the balloons. Maybe not. So we're going to let that dry and we're going to go in and actually I think the green, I'll do some polka dots. And you can use, actually, you don't have to use the green. You can just go and take uh, peacock blue and change that green. I'm going to loosen this color up a little bit, make it more translucent, and that becomes green polka dots just by adding the peacock blue and change the color. Pretty cute. Same thing with this. You want to do that. Maybe you have a stripe going like a curvy stripe on this balloon. All right, we'll let this dry and we'll do our marker connecting the balloons to the presents. So once that's dry, Basically, do like a little bow tie. Let me zoom in so you can see. Like a bow. And then bring it down, and it can connect the present like this. Does that make sense? I hope so. Again, this one was kind of wonky, so we'll just maybe going down. Maybe we don't see the one that's behind this one. 
right? Again. Just connect it with the Sharpie marker. Really kind of cute. And then writing the words in this one, you can write, I would write happy up here, H-A-P-P-Y. And then birthday down here, you space out where you want the words to go. And again, for the tape, pull it away for you. Now, I don't know why I taped everything down, but I just did. Um, but not really necessarily. And then you have these two cute cards and that same technique of overlaying um, the glazing technique. One is really background. You know, you could do the same thing. We could put a background here and do the same thing. And one is not. And I hope this was fun and educational about glazing with watercolor as well as making simple birthday cards, right? You get two things in one. <laughs> um, and if you're a Patreon member, stick around for the third one. And if you're not a Patreon member, click the link below in the description box to join. I've got added videos, um, exclusive tutorials on Thursdays. We've got giveaways and uh, weekly challenges on my Facebook group, all kinds of stuff. And you get first dibs and watercolor workshops and retreats. So thank you guys so much for stopping by my channel. Listen, I have a bunch of birthday card videos. Go check them out if you're looking to do birthday cards and you're doing something fun and different and bright for the new year. Go check them out. Thank you so much for stopping by and take care and I'll speak to you soon.